here. We can start here? Yeah. Do you want to start talking about what we're going to talk about? Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go! Are you gonna? No, I'm not ready. Okay, Uh, intro. intro. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Okay. Warning The topics discussed on this podcast are subject to adult themes and languages. We seek to unravel the unexplained and unknown. This is Encounters. Oh man, so here we are, Myrtle's Plantation. No, wait, that's not the way to jump into that, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to say hi to the people? <laughs> hi, people. Yeah. Okay, so today, no. Amanda and I are diving into the depths of the bayou and going <laughs> yes. to Louisiana. Ooh. <laughs> that sounded like a that. lot gayer than I thought it was going to sound. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, yes. I don't know. Louisiana. This might lose like this might lose me points or whatever, but I love Louisiana because of True Blood. And a lot of you other would. Shit. And a lot of other guys. Shit. I love Louisiana just in general. I love New Orleans <laughs> specifically, but yes, I really love True Blood. Y'all, we fought yesterday. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> I hate you so much. This is so. I don't understand how you don't under get how this is so blatantly obvious. <laughs> okay, we're not even gonna get back into. No, let's argument. do it. Let's do it. Let's ask them because no. we can make a poll on Facebook and no. see who's right no, or wrong. <laughs> You're not going to convince me otherwise. I'm not changing my position on this. I don't care what anybody says. I'm I'm sticking to my guns. Okay. I don't care. No. <laughs> okay. Okay, fine. I, In other news, I don't care. You can... <laughs> today, we're going right. to dive into one of Louisiana's most haunted houses or haunted homes, I guess, technically, isn't it? Because now it's a bed and breakfast like... and a museum. <laughs> Yes, and a scary, scary place. <laughs> yes, very scary place. Yeah, they say this Myrtle Plantation is probably one of the most haunted spots in America, and it's really well documented too. Like these hauntings, like you go on YouTube and type in Myrtle's Plantation, you're gonna get a crap ton of videos just about people where stuff has happened and stuff hasn't happened, but. There's a lot. There's pictures. There's just a crazy amount of evidence proving this place is haunted. I can attest to that. I did that today. (laughs) (laughs) You type it in and you get ghost hunters, ghost investigations, travel channels, um, uh, location unknown. All these just amazing amount of different paranormal ghost hunting shows have gone there. It's been documented on any kind of like paranormal travel channel show you can think of and um, not only that but they have their own website they run like we said a bed and breakfast out of it and it's in the quaint little part of louisiana called saint francisville it's how it used to sit on 600 acres but i think it's 10 acres now with um a gift shop and the original house Mm-hmm. Well, you can't, built, like, yeah, you can't really say original. The original Myrtle's Plantation house sits there now, but the original home that was there has long since been built on. <laughs> yeah, it's been changed a, a bit. <laughs> a bit. There is, a little bit. <laughs> uh, they have little cottages on the grounds where guests can stay. You can also rent rooms in the home yeah. itself which i think it sounds has like, like a, a fantastic restaurant? idea yeah honestly i would love to do this i i've been saying this is like a dream spot for me i have always wanted to go to myrtle's plantation i have <laughs> i don't know why but this story has stuck with me the most out of any like kind of ghost story i've ever heard and you can just go and stay there and like <laughs> have an experience or not of your own. Or not, because as I read in some very angry blogs earlier today, some <laughs> things don't happen. 
right for everyone sometimes yeah not everyone which i would be fine with because i hear stories of people like running out of the house like not able to stay not even the whole night i would rather just have nothing happen and like get a good night's sleep <laughs> oh the <laughs> children didn't come bounce a ball in my room tonight good they didn't <laughs> yes, flick me on god. the nose thank god i got to sleep <laughs> right <laughs> at this expensive bed and breakfast that i'm staying at because i'm supposed to get scared right exactly no thank you <laughs> it's actually a really really pretty house i encourage you guys to google search it go to their website actually it's fantastic uh i don't know what it is so insert website here but i'm sure you can just google myrtle, myrtle plantation. plantation yeah <laughs> Um, but they offer ghost tours and shadow tours and stuff like that just for any dark tourist that wants to come in and get scared a little bit, but also enjoy right. like mimosas at brunch. Right. And no, we are not a sponsor of Myrtle's Plantation, but if they want a sponsor, you know, just let us know. <laughs> I mean, hell, we don't even have to be your sponsors. One free night, one discounted right. night, 50% off. Two exactly. for one special. How about that? Exactly. That's perfect. Ugh. Well, we would. I would. Mm. What? Sorry. You don't want to go? <laughs> I, I want to go, but I'm not, not going by myself. Well, no. Two for one special. Buy one, get one free. Like, I get in, you get it free. And it's like 50 50 for us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But we share in a room. I saw this; these two girls go, and they had two separate rooms. I don't even know why you would want to do that. <laughs> yeah, no. We share in a bed, bitch. Like, <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> Get ready to cuddle, because it's going to be a long night. <laughs> uh... Okay. All right, so should we dive into the histories? Yeah, sure. Of Myrtle's no, plantation? It's, yeah, it's a deep seated history. Right? So, Myrtle's was built in 1794 by Dave Bradford, a wealthy lawyer who was fleeing from Washington because George Washington had put a bounty on his head for his involvement in the Whiskey Revel- <laughs> Rebellion. Yeah. Have you ever heard. <laughs> Uh, do you know much about the Whiskey Rebellion? Because I sure don't. Uh, I didn't until today, but <laughs> it's a it's it's actually like this long kind of taxation without representation thing. It stems all the way back right? to Alexander Hamilton, in fact. And it was the first tax that they instituted on a good in America, uh, almost like a sales tax, probably exactly yeah. like a sales tax. I don't know. But yeah. um, it was how they were planning to pay off the Revolutionary War debt. And the people of, I think it was Pennsylvania, were very, very mad about this because on the frontier, whiskey was used uh, almost as a form of currency. Like if you couldn't pay a full wage to your worker, you would pay them in whiskey, in whiskey rations. And so it was seen as also a dual luxury tax getting income and sales tax. So Mm -hmm. these farmers and other people rioted and said, this is fucking crazy. This is what we just fought for. (laughs) And it got really bad and very violent. And um, George Washington was like, nope, Bradford, fuck you. Like, I want you to get on a platter. (laughs) And he ran off to Louisiana and built this little bitty house. Well, it wasn't little bitty at the time. Yeah. It was like 10 rooms. But yeah. it was smaller than it is today. Yeah. And it had a different name. Yeah. Laurel's Grove? Laurel, Laurel Grove. Grove. I remember that because when I was, I was like, oh, is that the place from Power Rangers? I was like, no, that's Angel Grove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Uh but yeah, he ran off, left his family, he left everybody behind and built this plantation. And then in 1799, he was pardoned by John Adams. So everybody, he, his wife and kids came to live with him. And I think he had like three kids. Um, I thought he had five. He might have. I think they had three kids. He probably did have five. Yeah, but uh, what happened? He... 
He ended up dying in 1808, and his widow Elizabeth ran the property until 1817 when he, she got Clark Woodruff, who this was a law student of General Bradford, yeah. who had married his daughter Sarah. Yeah. All right. So, and this Clark <laughs> Woodruff and Sarah are part of a giant legend. So I think we should kind of, before we kind of go on with this, we should talk about the legend of Chloe. Is that cool? Yeah. No, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Chloe. Okay. So. The, the woman in the green beret. Green turban. Or, yeah. I, it's, it's been called beret. It's been called turban. Um, yes. But it is definitely what I would consider a turban. Yeah, and this is one of the kind of ghosts that haunts the property. So, um, Chloe was a slave girl who worked for Clark Woodruff and his wife. Um, and it's said that Chloe and Clark Woodruff started having an affair like she was forced to have an affair with him yeah because his wife was pregnant with their third child at the time Mm-hmm. and so and they had two daughters in this legend they have two daughters so then um after a while mr woodrow started losing I, I think it was a judge but he started losing interest in chloe so fearing that she would be sent back out to the field she was caught eavesdropping on the family right so they ended up cutting off her left ear because she was caught eavesdropping as punishment, and severing yes her ear off of her head yes ow so after that she decided to bake a cake for the family and she decided to poison it. No one really knows why she decided to poison it. A lot of people think it was because she wanted to nurse the family back to health. So ensuring her position inside the house. Uh, others say it's for revenge. Who knows? She wasn't trying to kill anybody. She was just trying to make everybody sick. Well, what ended up happening is she put too much. It's some kind of flour. Oleander. Yeah, oleander flour in this cake. And the two daughters and Sarah ate the cake and they all ended up dying because uh, she over poisoned them. And then it said that <clears throat> the slaves ended up hanging Chloe from a tree and then throwing her into the Mississippi River. Yeah, they were worried that they their masters would think that Chloe represented them as an uprising. So in retribution, they killed her to show them that they had no loyalty to her, hung her from a chandelier yeah. in one of the bedrooms, and then after oh. she was pronounced dead, they took her and tied rocks to her feet and threw her in the Mississippi River. Yeah. So, and they're set, there's pictures of like what looks to be a woman in a kind of like a turban-esque servant outfit standing in between these buildings. We'll post it. It's a really interesting picture to me. And how they got uh, that picture is what is really crazy. They were trying to get some insurance statements for the uh, whole building and plantation and whatnot when it became a historical site. And the owner at that time, Tita Moss, snapped a picture of the buildings to show how close the gift shop and the house were. And in that picture, you can see a woman in a turban standing against the wall of the house in between mm -hmm. the breezeway of those two buildings. And the really weird thing is you'd think, okay, it's a weird trick of photography, something like that. There's a second picture from a completely different angle where you can still visibly see the woman standing against mm. that wall. That's so crazy. This is where my story comes in. This picture mm. is yeah. crazy. When you think about it in the relationship that I watched, I was watching the Ghost Hunters 
like aftershocks episode on this and Mm -hmm. was they were retelling the story of the fire that happened this property has had many bad things happen to it throughout its like time but Mm -hmm. one of the crazy things happened in 2014 when the gift shop caught on fire and almost set the entire house ablaze um the one of the tour guides who was working at the museum at the time said that he went home and was just hanging out like eating i think with his cat and all of a sudden (laughs) some like something some presence came into his room and he was like i've worked long enough at the museum that i was like no you are not welcome here get out and everything just kind of ceased but you could see the cat like freak out and um later he went to bed and had this like he called it a premonition like this dream where these this woman in white with two children came to him and was like you need to get out there's a fire He was in the house in his dream and she was up on the staircase and all she kept saying to him is, there is a fire, you need to get out. He had that dream three weeks before the fire happened in 2014. Mm -hmm. He had that dream every night for three weeks until the fire the fire like okay basically the place still it catches on fire but um the firefighters determined that the fire was started by an electrical cord that had shorted out and because it Mm -hmm. was like old wood it just went up a blaze the part of the house that would have caught fire first is the spot directly where chloe is standing Oh, crazy. The weirder thing is, right where Chloe is standing is a gas water heater. Mm -hmm. If that fire had touched right there, the entire plantation would have exploded in a gas explosion. But it didn't. That's crazy. No, that was a good story. There's also a haunted mirror that has the souls of the wife and two girls trapped in it, apparently. That was kind of crazy. That is crazy. They said it's because a lot of, like back in the day, I guess they used to put cover mirrors and like open windows to let souls release from the house. Yeah. Yeah. And they said that this mirror wasn't covered. So they have the souls of Sarah and her children trapped in it. I'm like, I feel so bad for Sarah and her children. Right? Like, they had a rough go at it. Oh, God. And they did. They really did. So, allegedly there was 10 murders committed in this house. One being William Winter. Yeah. William Winter is one of the owners that comes a little... The house changes hands so much. Mm -hmm. Like, from family to family, from family to family. And it's because the house, when it went through the Civil War lost all of its money. All of the rich that the family had gained was all in Confederate bills. And once the Union won, the Confederate bills didn't mean shit anymore. So they basically lost all of their money. The house was even at one point turned into like the bank. It owned it at one point, but it was bought back two years later. And Mm -hmm. William Winter ends up owning it. And his legend is that he's in bed and this mysterious writer comes up to the plantation calling out his name and william being the man that he is comes strolling out and is like what and the mysterious writer shoots william in the chest and william crawls back into the house past the parlor past the gaming room up to the stairs all the way to the 17th stair where he dies in the arms of his wife and it's said that in the house you can still hear William's crawl 
from the front door all the way to the 17th step, but no further. Mm-mm-mm. There's also said, like Dakota said, in the Civil War, the house was actually kind of destroyed by Union soldiers. And it said that three Union soldiers were killed by a gunshot in the gentleman's parlor, leaving like a blood stain that was the size of a human that could not be cleaned up. No matter what they did. Uh, they did everything. And that stain was still there. It's also allegedly built on a Indian burial ground. Yeah, the tunica. Mm-hmm. Because we all know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I feel about that. So there's another thing. They say that the land is cursed. And that's another reason that there's a lot of hauntings there. They also said the man named Lewis Sterling was stabbed to death over a gambling debt. And that there was another murder of a caretaker on Myrtle's plantation. Do you know any other murders? Because I know. <laughs> I don't know of any other murders, but I know some of the other encounters that happened there. So. I'm just going to say this now, because I think this is the time. All of that was false. Not all <laughs> there was, of it. Not, not all, all of it. it. This, that's not all thing. of it. There's a lot of truth in it, but there's a lot of fakeness to it, too. Yes. Or misinterpretation. Yes. Um, out of the alleged 10 murders that happened at Myrtle's Plantation, only one is documented, and that was... Um, William Winter. Yes. He was shot on the porch... Um, I, I heard stories, I heard that he actually passed away on the porch. Yeah, there's no way he crawled through the house all the way past those parlors up to the staircase and died dramatically on the 17th step. <laughs> no, but that story is beautiful. It, and it people is. do hear, <laughs> not beautiful, because that's so sad, but, uh. Um, I mean, it, but yeah. it's melodramatic. It really is. It, it yes. plays to our sense of. Oh my God, isn't that, that's sad and spooky and just, ah, he died in the arms right. of his love and he only can make it to the 17th step because he's trapped in purgatory. Right. Well, no, mm. but there are steps he that are heard around the mansion or around the plantation. Um, guests report hearing loud footsteps and children's footsteps. Right. And like we said on YouTube, I watched a video where you can clearly hear in the video you can hear footsteps uh in Myrtle's plantation well in the 2013 ghost adventures investigation that went on or ghost hunter investigation that went on they had a I think scene it was ghost hunters i think it is ghost hunters but i've got yeah. ga written here so i don't know hmm, but maybe it is adventures who knows it's from the 2013 investigation where they put a ball on the 17th step, and when someone went to move the camera, the ball, like, shot down the steps, but nobody was near it, and they, like, freaked out. So to say that it's just the 17th step, I don't know, but some shit went down on the 17th step that night. Right, right. Um, So there is a lot of reports of footsteps. Also, the story of the legend of Chloe is... Also not true. There's no records of there being a slave named Chloe, but I'm, I mean, here's the I don't thing. Know how... it, you know, if Chloe was as important as she was, why would there be records of her? Would he not be able to wipe those records? It's not like this is like encrypted, like downloadable data. This is just a piece of paper that can be ripped off and thrown away. Yeah. It said that Sarah and her daughter and her son died of yellow fever. This is where the Chloe thing is definitely false. <laughs> yes. There may have been... There was obviously somebody who passed away who... I mean, because there's multiple stories. I mean, there's pictures of this woman in the green turban. It's just no... This legend of Chloe is not necessarily this idea that we've got of chloe is what is confusing we know in louisiana there was big voodoo practice and being a plantation you could only assume there might have been some voodoo at least on the grounds i wouldn't be so surprised at all and yeah um in fact one of the interviews they do is uh with a voodoo practitioner and um, he very much says that there are spirits there and there, some of them, they are very content and happy to be there. 
I also found it really interesting that for voodoo to work properly, someone has to do something negative against you for the voodoo spell to work. Otherwise, it gets rebounded times three. Mm, yes. Coming at you with the voodoo. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, no. Sarah Woodruff and her two children definitely died. The problem is Sarah had three children, two girls and a boy. Mm-hmm. The yes. One of the girls would pass away, the boy would pass away, and Sarah would pass mm-hmm. away. Sarah first, and then the two children uh, later in 1823 and 1824. And... This house actually has a history with yellow fever. A lot of people. Most of these murders that... A lot of people actually did pass away here. But it, yes, it was from yellow fever, not these grisly murders. Right. So there's no way that Chloe murdered this person or anything like that. But there, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a slave girl that was tortured at that house. Or it changed it changed hands a lot of times before the Civil War. Anyway, that's our own theories. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry, guys, but no, that's fine. I like it. <laughs> um, and a lot of the owners suffer their own kind of tragedies. Exactly. Like they end up leaving or can't afford to keep it or have to go somewhere or die. else. <laughs> yeah. Or their kid takes it over. Or someone buys it as a bed and breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people did pass away on this land. Like, a lot of bad things did happen here. Even though these crazy legends aren't true. And it's weird for me do, like doing this because Myrtle's Plantation have, has always been such a big thing for me. And <laughs> these legends have always been such a big thing for me i'm like all oh, these stories and to like actually research it and find out that they're completely different well i think that's what's exciting about it yes i think that's what's exciting about it because i definitely think that myrtle's plantation is haunted oh so haunted it has got some spiritual activity paranormal activity heavy going on do i think it's like malevolent no yeah i don't think it's evil at all but i do think it's just it's got a lot of residual energy specifically that is there and with a lot of unfinished business, I think it's got a lot of intelligent energy that is there. And when you've got this weird mixture of intelligent and residual, I feel like you get a like a synet, like what's the word? Um, you get a synchronicity? No. Shit, trying to use this. Synergy. Things. You get synergy. Yeah. That's it. You you take nice the residual word, energy and you take the intelligent energy and you get synergy. And you add that to the guests coming there wanting to be scared, mm-hmm. giving into that PK energy, and you're, you're bound to have manifestations. Yes. And I think that's what's exciting about it, because it's one of the only places that we know specifically you can go, and with the right intentions, you are going to get to see something. Right. Or experience something. Exactly. It shows you how when things get popular like this, like all these people are rushing there to get scared, and it's just building ah just god well and i think that's good because i think the good spirits that are there can harness that energy and the positivity that comes with right. it right um it's not like they've got shadow people crawling in and out their windows very true people do get scared but it doesn't seem like anything's like going out to harm and scare people yeah in fact we have a friend who stayed there yes for their honeymoon because that's the kind of friends we have. <laughs> and if you if you knew Natalie, she said we could say her name. Uh, you would understand exactly what I mean. She's she's very in tune with the paranormal. Um, and so her and her husband went there for their honeymoon, and they did have an experience there. And she said I could share her story. So they. Like we told you earlier, there's like a main house and then there's cabins all around that people can rent out. And when they rented out uh, Myrtles, they were the only ones going to be in the house at the time. Everyone else was renting the little kind of cabins. But they did say when they got there, there was one other person, but they were on the other side of the house. And it's a big house. It's a plantation. Yes. So they were the only people on this that side of the house. And uh, 
first she told me that they were like walking the grounds and they met another couple who had gotten married and were on their honeymoon and they were all hanging out and drinking and having a really good time. And there were actual ghost hunters on the property as well, staying in one of those other cabins. And they said that while they were hanging out and talking, that one of the uh, bushes started shaking as if someone was walking past it and they were hitting it, right? They didn't see anybody over there. There was no animals to their knowledge. They couldn't see anything. They went over there. They checked it out. There was no animals or anything like that. Um, So they went and told the ghost hunters what had happened. But she said, like, it, it shook pretty crazy. Like, it was like someone hit it, really, (laughs) as they were walking by. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, so they said after that, they had parted their ways, and they went up to their room. They were staying, I think they said, it was like the big master room. And they had like a big old bed in there, and their own like bathroom. And she said in the bathroom that there was a closet, and... It kind of like wait wait wait. There wasn't a chandelier in their room. Was no, there? she was staying in the room above the chandelier. Okay. Yeah, she said. Well, I'll just get to that later. But sh- they did see the room with the chandelier, and they had heard all about it. Um, because I guess they do a tour and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So they had like done all that crap. So they, she was taking a bath, and she said, "In this, there's this closet that had a curtain over it, but you could see like it went further back." Um. She said the whole time she was taking a bath, she felt like somebody was watching her. Like, just, she was getting the creepiest feeling. She just felt like someone was there just watching her. And her husband was actually, like, walking around, kind of uh, speaking out to the spirits, taking pictures of, like, different things and whatnot. And she said she, like, cut her bath short because she was really freaked out and she just felt so, so uncomfortable. And her and her husband were talking. He was kind of provoking the spirits when they heard footsteps. And she said, (laughs) she said she was done after that. She's like, it's time to go to bed. And he was like, all right, go ahead, turn off the lights. And she's like, I I refuse to turn off the lights. I felt like if I, right when I turned off the lights, something was going to happen. And she said it felt like something was in each corner of the room and that when she turned off the lights that they were going to come out of their corner and do something. She said her husband was sleeping on the side of the bed that was towards like the room and she kept hearing footsteps coming from that side of the room all night and he kept trying to get her to switch sides but she refused to switch sides with him and she said I wouldn't switch sides either fuck all that right you deal with that right (laughs) and she said um, at one point in the night because I guess it was like a little walk down and she kept hearing footsteps but it wouldn't like take the step up but towards the end of the night she heard it take take the step up and like get kind of close to the bed but it didn't get any closer than that oh I just had a twitch Oh, uh-huh. thunder. Oh, shoot. <laughs> and she said, that was pretty much, she knew, she said that there was a feeling the whole time. She knew it was haunted. Right when I told her we were doing this podcast, the first words that came out of her mouth was, that place is haunted. Like, she felt energy that whole entire night. Like, she said she had a hard time sleeping, and she just refused to turn off the lights. No. No, 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 no. I, no. I don't, I don't know if I want to go now. <laughs> if Natalie got scared, I don't want to go. Right? Mm-mm. Okay, I do want to go. I know, right? <laughs> I want to see. Like, can we go stay in the judge's room? I don't know. <laughs> I'm about to look up prices right now. <laughs> <laughs> there was um, other stories about Vernal's Plantation. There was a film crew there. Um, let me see if I remember the name of the film. Long Hot Summer, <laughs> which sounds like the best film. Nasty. <laughs> that was nasty. <laughs> but they were... F- what is it? Long Hot... Wet Long Summer? No, Long Hot Summer. Um, okay, that doesn't sound as nasty as I thought it was. <laughs> but they were filming at Myrtle's Plantation, and it, they said it was said that they would move the furniture the way they wanted it in the um game room and the dining room and then they would film they would leave set and when they would come back all the furniture would be placed 
in its original spots. And there would be nobody on the set. They don't know how it was happening. And it kept happening. Every single day, they would move the furniture. And every single time they would come back, it was back um, to its same spot. And it was said the crew was relieved to leave Myrtle's after filming there. Oh, shit, no. How expensive is it? Uh, girl, $580 a night. Yeah. No, I would no, want to get scared too. $580 for the night, like for the two nights that I've picked. What, what days? Are you doing like a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Saturday, Sunday? Or Friday, Saturday? I'm doing a fucking Friday, Saturday, That's why it's so expensive. You had to do a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or something like that. How am I going to take off work to go to Louisiana? I'm off on Tuesdays, and I don't know why I'm telling you that. I know, but I'm the one looking, so I'm not looking at your schedule. I'm looking at my schedule. I see schedule. that. This is like in November, too. Right, cold. It's all occupied. We'd have to get... The Coco House, which that doesn't sound I fun. don't want to do that. <laughs> or we could stay in the Oleander Garden Room. That sounds pretty. The Poisonous Flower Room? No. Is that a poisonous flower? That's the flower they say that Chloe killed everybody Is that with. what it was called? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I guess it sure was. Dang. <laughs> um, if anyone's interested, it is Myrtle'sPlantation.com. Just so you know. Thank you. Still not a sponsor, but still willing. <laughs> still here. <laughs> Hit us up, man. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Like, with most people that claim to have these, like, haunted homes, in the interview that I saw with um, the actual owner, Tita Moss, she is not over sensationalizing this shit. She literally was like, I don't have to over sensationalize. It it happens. Right. Like, and that's what I like to see when people are trying to get me to come to, I guess, a haunted bed and breakfast. Because that to me says shit does happen. If someone's like, Oh my god, we've got this and this it's in the boogeyman, it's in the closet, it's like, okay, but is there? Right. Is that an animatronic bush? <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> but with Myrtles, it's like, okay, some shit really did probably go down here. And even if it's not the exact way that they say it is, it probably still happened to some capacity. Right. Exactly. Did you have any other stories? I guess we could talk about how it's probably bullshit that it's built on top of an Indio Barrow. Ground. I mean, given. <laughs> That's stupid <laughs> I don't think it was built on top of an Indian burial ground but I'm sure if they did have slaves I'm sure the land is cursed I'm sure especially if they were practicing voodoo and because the whole practice of voodoo is something negative has to be done to you for you to cast something and curse somebody yeah I'm not I wouldn't be surprised if people did curse the land yeah I mean, that's, that's all I know about Myrtle's Plantation. I still do want to go see it. I think it would be wonderful. There's plenty of stories of apparition, ap, apparitions, apparitions of, like, people getting woken up with a woman and a candle and a green turban. Like, so, obviously. The lady in white idea, I definitely believe. I definitely believe Myrtle's Plantation is haunted just from reading all the crap we've read and seeing all the videos we saw. Yeah, go out and watch these episodes, y'all. You'll learn a lot. And if anything, you'll learn a lot about just, like, the history of this house, which is a really pretty house, honestly. Yeah. Um, it's quaint. Someone bought it and, like, put a bunch of money in it, made it huge, and that's when it was called Myrtle's Plantation. Like Because of the crepe myrtles that were on the property. So people put love into this house. So it is a very beautiful house. And you can stay there. And all there. they got was death and debt. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Damn the Civil War. There's even a book out um, about one of the owners' experiences in the plantation home. So I encourage you to go pick a copy of that up. I don't know what the fuck it is, so Google it and find out. But <laughs> let me know if you like it. <laughs> you know, he likes to read. Yeah. I was trying to read for this one, but I bought a different book. But the book was talking about how all land is cursed. Oh, really? 
Because death has happened for millennia. That's very true. It was like we live in a wasteland of the spirit world. And I was like, oh my god. I didn't make it past that because I was on a cruise and I was drinking. So. <laughs> I but know, that, that would have really me. me. <laughs> that would have scared me to death. I'd be like, all right, thanks, bro. Okay, closing this for the rest of the cruise. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy the Bahamas instead. Right. Okay, so um, yeah, that's our episode on Myrtle's Plantation. Um, what are we going to talk about next week, Amanda? I have no earthly idea. Somewhere between reptilians and genies or something. I don't remember what we said. Let's do reptilians. You want to? You want to go down this road already? Girl, that's going to be a two-hour episode, but I'm ready. Okay, guys. Get ready to not hear this beautiful voice for the next 45 minutes. That's awful, but true. Um, Join us next week as we dive into Reptilians 101, a brief Dakota overview Uh, (laughs) with Amanda. Special guest. (laughs) But uh, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did like what you heard, uh, if you did like what you heard, no. If you do like what you hear, please follow, subscribe, um, rate, and review. Yes, let us know what you think. Hit us up in those comments with nice things. We do have an Instagram as well. Yes, Encounters Paranormal on Instagram. Encounters a Paranormal Experience on Facebook. Find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play. And until next time, this is Dakota. Um, I'm Amanda. <laughs> Forgot who I was. Are we done? Do we stop? Do we push the stop button? Are you gonna say some stupid? <laughs> okay, I stay s- stupid. <laughs> I'm hurt. <laughs> tell him to stay frosty or whatever you're gonna tell him. That's nasty. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>